You're watching Brainstorm Makers. I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. Today we're going to share a little bit of our history with you that relates to Christmas ornaments. One of the things I love about Christmas is when you unpack the ornaments and put them on the tree, it's like the story of our lives. The earliest Christmas ornaments on this tree are actually from when I was in high school. I've always loved to collect Christmas ornaments, and somewhere along the line in high school, I discovered that there were a couple of German companies out there that were making, here I can grab this one easier. They were making these they're just stamped filigree, and they're gold-colored. I don't know that they're actually gold-plated. Uh, they're not gold-plated. <laughs> because I, I, I didn't have that kind of money as a kid. They're just cool, and I adored them. And I would buy these whenever I saw them, save my pennies for Christmas, and then I stashed them. I kept them out of the, the family Christmas ornaments with my own stuff in my closet. And I had my own little stash of ornaments, which actually I never put on the tree. They were kept in my bedroom for my personal decoration. But I wound up with a small collection of probably four or five. You can see there's a couple of different ones in here, different shapes. And then once we were married, I actually continued that process of watching for more. And I was able to acquire probably another two or three. Then they sort of disappeared. I um, haven't found any recently that were decent quality. But this is a real important part of our, our history, as it were. So well, we, ha we have a, another one up there on the tree. Let, let me see if I can grab that one. Oh, you get ornaments in the way. Okay. Now this ornament is special. We went to England a fair number of years ago. I had a lot of business that I had to attend. And we went to Kensington Palace. Mm -hmm. And in the Christmas shop, well, in the, in the gift shop there, we found I found this one, and also actually there's another one over here. This one, this one. And I looked at those and went, "Those will make awesome Christmas ornaments." So they became part of our regular Christmas tree. Now. We don't put out every single one of our Christmas ornaments every year. You know, we've had trees that are a whole lot bigger than this. They've been seven, eight, nine feet tall sometimes that mm -hmm. will more than fill this corner. And there's still not enough room on the tree to no. hold all of them. Well, we have boxes and boxes of ornaments, and it's an important part of our history. We love to collect ornaments. We love to reminisce about where things came from. Now, this ornament has some special significance for us. When we were first married and Irene was pregnant with our first child, Christopher, who is going to be <clears throat> 44 this year, mm -hmm. she made this ornament. Yeah. Uh, I love making handcrafted ornaments. And this is actually crocheted, which is actually one of my least favorite things to do. I don't care for crocheting particularly, although I'm decent at it. But this is simply a paper towel roll that was chopped off. Then I crocheted a red end and another red end. And then in a circle, joined it all together and made a zigzag and it's a little drum. And I have a couple of these and a little Christmas tree, that sort of thing. I was pregnant. What else are you going to do? It's not a, it's not, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm a hippopotamus now. And that's one of my many handmade ornaments. Now we have another ornament on the tree. Mm, let's see. Oh, this one right here. This ornament was from a few years before Christopher was born. We were newly married. We didn't have a lot of money. We had no credit whatsoever. And we established two credit accounts mm -hmm. in town. We were living in Socorro, New Mexico while I was in school. And we walked downtown and there was a hardware store that was willing to give us, I don't know, 15 or $20 uh, store credit, something like that. 
Maybe right. more than and, that. And I think I want to say it was 25 or something like that. And then if you prove that you were capable of making monthly monthly or weekly payments or whatever, uh, you they would raise your level. You know, that was many, many years ago. Right, right. It was about 45 years ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There were a few places in town because that was, this came from the hardware store and there was a set of them and we have, I don't remember if it was a set of 10 or 12, but we have most of them. I think we've lost two or three over the ensuing 45 years. But uh, yeah, there's a whole little set of them that, uh, that we put out every year. And this actually is not supposed to be down there. I'm not sure why it is. They're always at the top because of the uh, kitty. Well, it's actually at the bottom because I moved it from the top down to oh, the bottom. So we could, I was like, I so, wouldn't put that down there. <laughs> so, we could, so we could have easy access to it. Now, that crocheted ornament that Irene showed you is down on the bottom, not because it's old but because it is reasonably cat proof right yeah everything at the bottom of this is pretty much unbreakable uh, there's we'll, we'll, we'll tell you some more about some of these other ornaments yeah. in future installments mm -hmm. there's a lot more to talk about we'll reminisce a little bit about it but we thought this would be interesting for you to see why we have some of the ornaments we have how long we've had them and what they mean to us right to me, a Christmas tree is an excellent, like a family album of all the different places you've been and the things you've done and the people you've known. You know, cartoon characters from the kids were little, little sets of different ornaments from different locations. Fun stuff. I think we'll show you a little bit about how we've been decorating this tree. It's been a few days. Irene explained earlier that she sets up trays of ornaments over here on the roll top desk and whenever we have some time a few minutes or maybe even more than a few minutes we'll go over and start putting more ornaments on the tree right this is not done and it doesn't have any tinsel on it yet but we're getting there <laughs> now those early ornaments went with our very first christmas tree that we bought for really cheap we're in disagreement about how much we paid for that tree i think it was a, a buck or two i really think it was about five dollars five dollars we bought it on the on the plaza in downtown Socorro. So we walked it home and somebody had paid for a cutting permit in the National Forest and gone out and cut half a dozen trees. At least when we got there, there were half a dozen left and they were selling them on the plaza. That allowed us to have a Christmas tree. Yeah, and we were going back home to visit our parents. I don't remember which direction we went, but we, we stopped both in New York and in Maine. We went to New York first. And had uh, had nice Christmas visits. It was a long way from New Mexico to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And remember, we were really poor college students at that point. Yeah, we hitched a ride with somebody. And we did. We drove 24 hours a day until we got from Socorro to Wonton, New York. Mm -hmm. That's where my parents lived, yep. And then she went on. She lived in New York someplace, I forget where, upstate, I think. And she went on to that, and then we took a bus from New York to uh, Maine. With a cat? With a cat. In a bag? In a bag. <laughs> we weren't supposed to have animals on the bus. Hey, you know, the cat, the cat was not obnoxious. Uh, you do what you need to do. But he was a long-haired gray cat. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Blue, blue-gray cat, actually. Mm -hmm. Named Gerhardt. Mm -hmm. And... We would sneak food to him in the bag. He ate kibble out of our hands, and he got really hungry one time and decided he was going to. Yeah, he got keep a finger or two in there, <laughs> but that's okay. If I was stuffed in a bag, I'd probably bite a finger too. <laughs> well, thanks very much for watching. We hope that this provided you a little more insight into why we have all these things on our tree, and we'll talk some more about them. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because we're going to be doing more Christmas stuff. Definitely. And if, and if you're not a person who celebrates Christmas, we're going to be doing more holiday stuff. And if you don't celebrate holidays, we're going to do stuff anyway. Right. Greenhouse. Garden. Stuff. <laughs> Cutting firewood. Yeah. Oh, by the way, last night we had a... Some rain that broke our long-term drought. Right. We had 0 .01 inches of rain last night. Woohoo! I know. It was amazing. The cat was like, what is wrong with the ground out here? It's wet, Mom.
<laughs> yeah, the cat likes to play in the water in the in the sink in the pantry. Why she doesn't like the water outside, I no, don't well, know. She was a little startled by it this morning, but then she was like, whatever, and just run out to play. <laughs> well, we'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Bye.